You know, the Christmas cat, that cat is very large. We don't know where he came from, nor where he has gone. He opened his eyes widely, glowing both of them. It was not for cowards to look into them. His hair, sharp as needles, his back was high and bulgy, and claws on his hairy paws were not a pretty sight. Therefore, the women completed to rock and sew and spin, and knitted colorful clothes or one little sock, for the cat could not come and get the little children. They had to get new clothes from the grown-ups. When Christmas Eve was lighted and the cat looked inside, the children stood straight and red-cheeked with their presents. He waved his strong tail, he jumped, scratched, and blew, and that was either in the valley or out on the headland. He walked about hungry and mean, in hurtfully cold Christmas snow, and kindled the hearts with fear in every town. If outside one heard a weak meow, then unluck was sure to happen. All knew he hunted men and didn't want mice. He followed the poorer people who didn't get any new clothing near Christmas and tried and lived in the poorest conditions. From them he took at the same time all their Christmas food and ate them also themselves if he could. Therefore the woman competed to rock and sew and spin and knitted colorful clothes or one little sock some had gotten an apron and some had gotten a new shoe or anything that was needful but that was enough for pussy should not eat no one who got some new piece of clothes she hissed with her ugly voice and ran away if she still exists i don't know but for no thing would be his trip if everybody would get next christmas some new rag you may want to keep it in mind to help if there is need, for somewhere there might be children who get nothing at all. Mayhaps that looking for these who suffer from lack of plentiful lights will give you a happy season and a Merry Christmas. That was a poem by Johannes Un Cochlin. Hopefully I did not butcher that name. A famous and beloved poet from Iceland. He was describing the Lolkothu, which again, hopefully I didn't butcher that name, also known as the Yule Cat or the Christmas Cat, which is what I will now be referring to this creature as for the rest of the video because I can't say that name again. <laughs> According to legend, this cat was taller than the tallest of houses and it would prowl about in Iceland on Christmas night, looking into the windows to see if children had gotten any new clothes as presents and if they had not the cat would eat the kids' Christmas dinner and then eat the child itself. The origins of this creature was likely dated back into the Dark Ages, however the oldest written account of it is from the 19th century, but according to Icelandic tradition, anyone who finishes their chores before Christmas would get new clothes as a reward while lazy children would get nothing. This legend may have also inspired generosity because it was said that if the rich would give clothing to the poor, they would also be passed over by the cat. The Yokat actually does have owners, which is a family of trolls who have 13 children that are essentially like trickster versions of Santa Claus, but that's a topic for another video. And with that, I will wrap up today's episode. I hope you've been enjoying Mystical Lore so far. I have several other more Christmassy or wintry themed creatures in the following weeks that I hope that you'll enjoy learning about as much as I have. It's really awesome, this series so far, because I didn't know anything about the Yule Cat until I started looking into it. So. I'm learning a lot with this series, and I really hope that you are too. He is on the galley already, so if you want your own uh, children eating cat in your game, go ahead and download him. The children eating part is not included, but you can pretend, right? But thanks again for watching, everyone, and have a magical day. Bye!